Now, when you want to analyze a company's fundamentals, there are various ways or as we say models to analyze a company. In this video, we are going to discuss two models to qualitatively analyze any particular company. The first one is Potter's 5 analysis. Now, Potter's 5 analysis is a model which was developed by a Harvard Business School professor, Michael Potter. He said that to analyze any particular company or to understand the fundamental uh, standings of any particular company, it is vital to look into five parameters or five factors. Five factors. He identified these five factors as uh, the industry rivalry or competition, the bargaining power of the suppliers, the bargaining power of the buyers, uh, the threat of new entrants, and the threat of substitutes. Michael Porter suggested that if one analyzes a company from these five perspectives or using these five parameters, one can, uh, you know, arrive at a conclusion of what are the prospects of the company in the industry and in the economy. So let us, let us look into these five factors. Well, the first thing that Michael Porter suggested to look into was the bargaining power of suppliers. Well, the suppliers here are the companies or institutions or firms from which the company in question, the company that we are analyzing, buys certain goods or materials or even a service, okay? Now, bargaining power of suppliers tries to understand what is the power of the suppliers to influence the terms and prices of the uh, transaction that they make with the company. If the bargaining power of the suppliers is high, that means the supplier could, uh, you know, want uh, terms and conditions in any particular contract which are beneficial to itself. Hence, the company that we are trying to analyze could face certain profitability issues. Issues They might have to pay a higher amount to procure the same good that they were procuring from the supplier previously. Okay, so ideally any company would like the bargaining power of its suppliers to be low. The next factor is the bargaining power for buyers. Well, when we say bargaining power of buyers, we try and understand, you know, how much of influence do, does the buyer have on the uh, contracts or the terms that are negotiated between the company and its uh, customers or clients, okay? So, say, suppose any particular company has only one major client, okay? In that case, the bargaining power of that client or of the buyer is going to be very high because the, com the client or the customer or the buyer knows that he himself is the only major client of the company. And hence, he could you know, enforce or influence the terms and conditions or prices of the contracts which are beneficial to itself, which would hurt the company's profits. Okay, so ideally, any company would like the bargaining power of its buyers also to be low. The next, fa the next factor is the threat of new entrants. Well, it looks into how easy it is for any other new institution to come and join the industry and try and sell exactly what the company is selling. Okay, so how easy is or how difficult is it is it for a new player to come into the industry and become a competitor to the company. The next factor is the threat of substitutes. This tries and looks into how, you know, is it possible that whatever the company is selling can be substituted with something else? So if there is a high threat of substitute, that means it is quite possible that whatever the company is selling could become outdated in the near future because another product has come in and substituted uh, the product or the service that the company was selling, okay? And the final thing which uh, Michael Porter suggests one needs to look into to analyze a company is the industry rivalry or competition. Ideally, one would want the competition to be low. The most ideal scenario would be a monopoly. 
but you know monopoly is going against the spirit of of uh, capital and market so one would want the competition to be low so that a company is not under severe uh, pressure to underprice or uh, you know underprice its products or services to sell it to the clients or customers okay so let us do an example of a Porter's 5 analysis on a company in India. Let's say, let's do a Porter's 5 analysis on Maruti Suzuki. Okay. Now, what are the bargaining power of suppliers for Maruti Suzuki? Well, Maruti Suzuki has several suppliers. Okay. And, uh, it, you know, because it has several suppliers and it procures from several different companies, the bargaining power of the suppliers is not going to be very high. And because Maruti Suzuki standing in the industry is much greater, hence it is quite high, highly unlikely to believe that the suppliers will have a major influence in the pricing, the terms and negotiations with Maruti Suzuki. Hence, in that case, the bargaining power of suppliers is going to be low. What about the bargaining power of the buyers? Well, the buyers of Maruti Suzuki's products are people. So it's the people who generally buy the cars of Maruti Suzuki. Now, it is not possible or it is absolutely impossible for the people to negotiate with the uh, Maruti Suzuki directly on the prices of the cars. Of course, uh, the buyer of the car does negotiate with the dealer, but that's actually the dealer's uh, profit which is being uh, negotiated. Maruti Suzuki is kind of like fixes the prices and it is if it if a car is sold the amount it gets is quite fixed and the bargaining power of the buyers or, or, or the buyers the cars does not really affect Maruti Suzuki hence the bargaining power of the buyers is also low what about the threat of substitutes well we do hear about a new model or a car being launched into the market very often hence substitutes are a major threat for Maruti Suzuki because the competitors are always trying to find a car which will sell better than cars of other companies. Hence, the threat of substitutes for Maruti Suzuki is very high and which is not a good thing uh, in a, about the company because ideally you would want the threat of substitutes to be low as well. What about the threat of new entrants? Well, to end, enter the uh, you know automobile industry in uh, India, it's not very simple. But at the same time, you know, foreign automobile companies are coming into India and trying to sell their products. Okay, so there is a competition from new. There, there is a threat of new entrants from uh, you know companies who have established brands abroad and are trying to come into India. But new companies cropping up in India is not that likely. Hence, we would say that the threat of new entrants is somewhere between low to medium. Finally, what about the industry rivalry and competition? Well, most definitely, automobile is a fiercely competed uh, you know, industry where cars compete with each other, other uh, where companies compete with each other very fiercely to sell their cars. Hence, the uh, rivalry, industry rivalry and competition is also high. Hence, we see that uh, Maruti Suzuki gets a good rating in 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 uh, three of the uh, Porter's five analysis. In two of them, it has a bad rating. Okay, so you could yourself analyze any company using this Porter's five example. The other model that one can use to analyze any company is the SWOT analysis. Now, the SWOT analysis simply looks at four key points about the company. The strength, the weakness, the opportunities, and the threats. So, it's a very simple, so it, it's basically asking very simple questions about the company. It's basically looking into what are the characteristics of the business or the team or what basically sets the company apart. What is the strength of the company? What is it that makes the company set uh, 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 different from its competitors? Weakness is what exactly are the disadvantages of the company? Okay, so we're trying to look into the disadvantages of the company. The opportunities, what are the opportunities or what are the 
external factors which if change would benefit which would benefit uh, the company so we can try we're going to try and look into the opportunities of the company and finally the threats or what are the external factors which if changes for the bad is going to harm the company so what are the threats of the company so if you are at the center you're basically going to ask few key questions when you're going to do SWOT analysis you're going to ask in the strengths what unique benefits do does the company provide you as a as a, as a say a customer or as a shareholder okay as a you want to ask what customers need uh, remain unfulfilled so what is exactly the weakness of the company what are the uh, you know customer needs which are remaining unfulfilled opportunities how can the company add more value that is what you will ask uh, in the opportunity section and the threat section you're going to ask where might the company lose its customers or how will uh, the customers get badly of the company get badly affected okay so these are the two models which you could use to analyze any company this is very frequently used in any fundamental analysis exercise to understand the standing of any particular company.